Hey everybody, Mac here. Welcome back to the channel, welcome back to the show, and welcome to Wednesday. What you see before you is Spin Masters Wonder Woman 12-inch action figure. This is something that I wanted to put up for Wonder May a few months ago when we were doing that, but I couldn't do it because this was one of the pieces that was back-ordered. It didn't get on here on time when it was supposed to. It came out later hit the store shelves. Actually, my online order with Entertainment Earth was even canceled. I had to buy this in Target off of the off the rack. For whatever reason, the online orders were canceled. Now, a few things about this. First of all, what we're going to be doing, because when we did Wonder May back in May, that was because uh, Wonder Woman 1984 was supposed to come out in June. That, however, did not happen because of C-19 affecting the world and everything is burning around us. But it is supposed to come out, Wonder Woman 1984 that is, it is supposed to come out on Christmas Day of this year, which is only about a month and a half, two months away from us right now. So what I am going to start doing, because there is plenty of product that I still didn't get to in Wonder May, we are going to be doing Wonder Wednesdays. Once again, I know it's corny, but it's my channel, I can do it. In which case, I'm going to take some of the items that, new and old, that I wanted to take a look at during May, but didn't get to, and on the Wednesdays leading up to Wonder Woman 84, we'll be taking a look at some of the product that came out since and some of the product that came out at the time that I just didn't get to. One of them being, as I said, this, our Spin Masters 12-inch Wonder Woman action figure. Spin Masters, along with McFarlane Toys, was one of the ones that picked up the DC license. Uh, they took it away from Mattel, I believe, and as we know, DC Direct has been closed down. So now it's just Spin Masters and McFarlane Toys. And whereas McFarlane Toys is definitely geared more towards the collector, Spin Masters has been gearing their product more towards children, towards actual toys built for play. And they have been leaning heavily into Batman. I'm sure you've seen them. They have three, they have uh, three and three quarter inch action figures. They have three and three quarter inch play sets. The Batcave just came out, which is actually really awesome looking as far as a playset goes. And they also came out with these 12 inch action figures. The ones that came out first were all Batman, but since then we have received Flash, Cyborg, Aquaman, Green Lantern, I think, maybe not. I can't remember all of the ones that have come out at the 12 inch line, but Wonder Woman was part of the first run. And that's what we're going to be taking a look at here today. And as you can see, right off the bat, even through the window packaging here, the colors are very bright. These are very big, chunky, practical action figures. They were built for kids to take and just bash together during play. The packaging is very unassuming. It's just basically one big window box with the branding here on the bottom. You can see here, which I think is kind of cool, that they do have this first edition sticker right on the side, so that if collectors do pick this up, they know which one is the first edition, which one is not. So I think that's pretty cool. It is sealed up very much in this card back, such as it is, that whenever we open this, it is going to rip apart. And we all know I open stuff, so take a good look at it, because we're never going to see it again. On the back here, we have a little bit of a cross-sell. Uh, Superman, Flash, Shazam. The Shazam figure is actually kind of cool, too. Um, I might actually pick that up, even though I'm not a big Captain Marvel fan. The figure just looked really cool, and it would look cool beside this one. We can see that it has articulation, and I think that's important because when Marvel... I think Marvel was the first one a few years ago to dive back into this 12-inch plastic action figure. Basically, Marvel's figures just move at the legs, the shoulders, and the head. I think, I think there's only like five points of articulation for it. But then when DC brought out the Titans line, and or no, was it the other way around? I can't remember. But since other manufacturers have dove into this 12-inch figure, articulation has been more of a focus. I think when Marvel first brought them out, they didn't realize that the 12-inch action figures were going to become as popular as they were. So, without further ado... Let's rip this packaging open, and we will take a look at Spin Master's 12-inch tall Wonder Woman. Okay, friends, here she is, Princess Diana, out of her packaging, and with the action figures, as we always do, the first thing we're going to do is put the tape measure to her and see how she measures up. And if we take, them, take it to her, we can see that she is 
just under 12 inches to the top of her crown, probably about 11 and three quarters is what we have. Now, first impressions with this, when I pulled it out of the packaging, this, if you can hear that on the desk, this is a very solid figure. The plastic is dense. It definitely feels like this is something that could withstand a kid, like I said, taking it and just beating two of them together while they're fighting and playing with them. And that's really cool. This is definitely something that is geared towards children, and I think that's important because I think a lot of toy manufacturers, McFarland Toys specifically, as we stated before, gears theirs towards the adult collectors. Hasbro has definitely started to wander into... No, I shouldn't even say wander. Hasbro has definitely leaned heavily into the adult collector. It's only been recently with some of their three and three quarter figures that are basically remakes of G.I. Joe and things like that that they are starting to try to get that child demographic back. That's what it seems like anyway. Lego, for the most part, I think, is the only one that has really stayed razor-focused on this is for kids, this is what kids want, this is what we're going to do. So with Spin Masters gearing theirs towards children, I think that is important, and I think it's fantastic. So let's bring Diana a little bit closer. Let me raise this up. because She is very, very tall. Oh. Tilt that up a little. There we go. And take a look at her face sculpt. And first of all, her face sculpt is fantastic. It really does. It really is great. Like, it doesn't look like Gal Gadot, and it's not supposed to be a representation of Gal Gadot. I'm not even sure it's supposed to be a representation of the current way that they draw Wonder Woman in the comics, but it does. This is a very wonderful face sculpt, and with these 12 inch figures, it should be because they have a lot to work with. You can even see the paint application in the eyes is practically flawless. Look at those blue eyes of hers shining through, the red lips, the, 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 the detail work, the paint on her eyebrows even. The face portrait on this, the sculpting of this, is really fantastic. This is probably the most detail it's in the whole figure is the head portrait, and I really, I really appreciate that. That looks really good. Now, back her up some more again. And let's take a look at articulation. First of all, at the arms. Well, no, let's start with the head. The head can do a three full 60 rotation. However, her hair piece is so stiff that it kind of makes it hard once it hits around the shoulders. And I wouldn't suggest doing that too much because even the little the bit that I've done it, you can see that her head is getting a little loose right there. Arms will go out to the sides. Shoulders do a complete 360 rotation. Single jointed elbow that doesn't really have a lot of travel. Um, it, I, would, I would like it to be able to tilt back just a little bit more, but that's about all we got. There is a bicep swivel, which I was surprised. And there is, there is a wrist swivel, but no pivot, just the swivel. Put your arms up for a second, Diana. Legs kind of do the splits. You can get them out, but they don't stay. Forward. Not so much backward, bends at the knees, and that's it. There's no thigh swivel, there's no boot cut, there's no waist pivot, there's no ab crunch, nothing like that. So that's what we have for articulation. And I think this is great. I, I, I actually really, despite this being something that is obviously for children, I actually really love the look and the feel and the appearance of this figure, it's very bright, it's very bold, it's going to pop, and it, it, it's definitely going to stand out on a shelf, not just because of its size, but because of how bold it is coming through. Even her bracers here have a great shine to them for being silver. I even like her little armlet on just one side over here. I would have liked to have seen a little bit more detail in her armor piece here and in her skirt, but once again, this is what it is. I mean, it, this isn't like a collector's masterpiece. Also keep in mind that these 12 inch tall figures are only $10. So, I mean, that is a great, that is a great price point for something this size as well. Her lasso of truth here. This is something that I'm a little disappointed in, but I understand why they did it. Her lasso of truth is glued on. It does not come off. So it's not an accessory. It's just part of her mold. And as far as accessories go, she has no accessories. Most of these 12 inch figures, if not all of them, I haven't taken a look at all of them, don't have accessories. 
However, you can see she has these grippy hands. Let's see if I can get it in closer. She has these gripping hands here that if we were able to find accessories scaled to a 12 inch figure, like a sword, a shield, maybe a spear, she would definitely be able to hold them. It's just up to us to find them. Now with the amount of articulation that she has, you might think that there's a lot of possibilities for displaying her on the shelf. And there are some, there are some, don't get me wrong, but there's not what I would call a lot. First of all, her elbow travel limits her ability to do that iconic crossed bracers look. You just can't do it, unfortunately. You can't even get close to doing it, which is sort of disappointing. It's, it's very disappointing to a collector like me. But once again, it is what it is, and you just have to appreciate it for that. Now, also, her skirt here, her armored skirt, is very much a soft rubber, but the only thing that really flaps are the front and back pieces. Everything else is pretty much glued into place, that it won't rip, it won't tear off. You can see that it doesn't come up far, and it's glued to her, to her torso. So, for a collector's piece, if it's going to be something that you're going to be into, go ahead and get it. Like I said, it's $10. Don't know if you can order them online. I know I saw them on uh, pegs at Target alongside things like Shazam, Flash, Superman, Aquaman. They definitely stand out. They're very bright. They're very colorful. They're fun little pieces. They're not going to be for everybody because not everybody wants the 12-inch line. Not everybody wants this simplified children's version of their action figures and i get that i totally get that but as i've said before we get so few new wonder woman pieces although i have been proven wrong recently that has picked up but i'm i'm thinking that's just because of wonder woman 84 and once wonder woman 84 goes by the well will run dry once again but we get so few pieces that once again i Whenever I see something, I snag it, I pick it up, and you'll see more of that down the line as we get closer to Christmas and the release of Wonder Woman 1984. You'll see that next Wednesday with some of the pieces that I have to show you. So, with that, my friends, we will be looking forward to next Wednesday. We have more videos coming down the line. Play well, everyone. Stay safe, stay healthy, and as always, thank you for watching.